there and welcome to a brand new episode of Delivering Marketing Joy. I am your host, Kirby Hossman, and joining me today, a living legend, a good friend of mine. He's the executive director of MIPA, and he's joining me today because he's got a new book. He's the author of a new book called Summit. Paul Kiwi, thank you so much for joining me today, bud. Hey, it's always great to uh, to have, have some time with you, Kirby. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've stolen some time before we started recording, so I appreciate you being patient with me. Um, so I want to jump into this new this new book. Uh, tell us about the new book, Summit. What's it about? And like, who's it for? Who, who have you written this for? Well, Summit, uh, I'm, I'm excited to finally write a book. It was one of those bucket list items. And uh, actually, my daughter, when, when she found out that I'd actually published, was like, uh oh, do you have anything left on your bucket list? And the answer, of course, is <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Keep that thing rolling. <laughs> but, you know, I've been writing and speaking in the industry forever. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, my my writing file on my computer, which, you know, probably I've got writing that goes beyond that. But I mean, it starts at like 2010, you know, so I've got 11 years of material. Right. And um, actually, Going back to 20, December of 2014, I, I came out of the, uh, uh, a doctor's office who had just told me that the tumor he found in my colon was, was malignant. Mm. And um, <laughs> he was like, and call your surgeon. It's like, yeah, like I've got a surgeon on my, <laughs> <laughs> on my speed dial. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, you know, but um, all I knew was that I had a malignant tumor. I didn't know what the staging was. And so it's one of those moments when you're really faced with your own mortality. And I'm pleased to say I didn't have, a, I didn't have any regrets other than the, the thought, this crazy thought occurred to me. It was like, you never wrote a book. And here I am six years later. <laughs> like, you, know, you can't really call it a defining moment when it takes you six years to actually do it. But um, certainly had been on my mind for a long time to, uh, to publish. And I, um, back in September was like the fifth anniversary of, of the passing of, of Stan Breckenridge, um, our good friend. And, and um, he served on the board of PPAI with me and followed me as chairman of PPAI. And we were pretty close friends. And I had written a tribute um, to him when I was turning over um, the reins of, of PPAI, uh, which talked about his resilience. I mean, here was a man who grew up in a, you know, with a single mother. His father had left, uh, left them. They were you know, on welfare. Um, and then he got sick and lost his hearing, uh, was able to recover his speech, and then was playing baseball which he loved and he got hit by a line drive right in the mouth and knocked out all of his teeth and broke his jaw and had to learn how to speak all over again. And despite hardships like that, the man you know, raised, <laughs> rose through the ranks in, in the industry and was just a totally inspirational story. And I digress, but I was really pleased about that writing. It was one of them where sometimes, you know, you've done a lot of writing career. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you'll go back and you'll read something you wrote and you're like, Wow, <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> yeah, and and so I started thinking of a best of, and ironically, it didn't fit in the book when I when I, <laughs> when I came through. But I wrote the book because from time to time I've had people contact me and like, hey, do you have a book? You know, I really enjoyed your your blog post or enjoyed your article, and um, have you compiled it? And I thought it's time to compile a book. Mm -hmm. And I had done a series starting with the number 10, 10 ways to become a professional and had done a countdown, um, nice. nine ways to build your personal brand, six clients to fire now, et cetera. Right. And so my working title was countdown to success. And my first 10 chapters were those 10 chapters. And then um, I started going through my writing and, and broke down about um, the internal game, about differentiation and, um, and I wrote my, I, I sent my first manuscript manuscript to Paul Valentone, mm -hmm. um, who gave me great feedback, but he hated the title. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's great feedback, right? You know, it was like countdown. He goes, with all the bombs and stuff today, I don't know if countdown's really the right, right direction you want to go with it. And, right. Um, but he agreed to write the foreword, which uh, I very much appreciated. And he wrote a great, great foreword in the book. Um, I also sent it to, to Stan Phelps, who co-authored co with 
with our friend Roger Burnett, the, uh, the, the red goldfish. And, yep. and Stan gave me some great advice, and including um, start telling people that you're writing a book and set a date and tell people it's going to be released yeah. on a specific date. That was very important advice yeah. because putting it out there is, is, is still tough. Yes. <laughs> you know? As someone who's done a lot of speaking, you wouldn't think of me as being a shy person, but still, every time I release uh, something I've written or, or something personal, I, I have to push myself to do it. And yeah. so that was great advice. And then uh, Dave Sweet, who wrote the, the Satisfaction Formula, um, also gave me some great feedback uh, on the book. And I started thinking about my experience on Mount Ararat, which was my my failure <laughs> it was mm -hmm. the, the mountain I did not summit. Yeah. Um, and uh, started thinking about the analogies around uh, climbing a mountain and reaching for success because we all go through a lot of valleys on the way to the mountaintops. And yeah. those mountaintops can vary a lot. And everybody's mountain is different. And mm -hmm. uh, so it, I wrote. Um, According to you know, Stan's advice, wrote a stronger introduction and preface, um, mm -hmm. and then um, wrote some fresh material about about climbing mountains and, and my experience climbing mountains. And um, it was a much. I thought I was going easy on myself by by putting together a compilation, but it was still a lot of work yeah. um, updating. One of the things that really was interesting was a lot of my material I'd written during the um, uh, the Great Recession of 2008. Okay. okay. And a lot of those lessons were exactly the same lessons that we were learning in the right pandemic now. that were hopefully towards the tail end of right now. But right. Um, working through adversity is something that is going to happen. Right. Um, <laughs> to get to the mountaintop, you have to you have to climb um, and you have to get through the valleys as well. Uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was a great, uh, great experience and, and extremely satisfying to be able to finally post and say, my book's being published. <laughs> so I, I, I want to ju jump on that because one of my next questions was why now, but you've, you've sort of alluded to, but I'm, I want to kind of ask a little bit of a different question because I said my next question was going to be, why did you decide the write the book during this time. But I think more, I want to ask, was the deadline that Stan Phelps gave you one of the reasons it got done? Yes, definitely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, if I had, and you know, for an awe moment, I chose my wife's birthday, April Nice, 23rd. nice, <laughs> love it. I told That's people that I was going to be releasing a book on, on April's birthday. And- That's good. I don't, I think if I had not followed Stan's advice, I'd still be editing. I'd yes. still be second guessing. Um, I'd be writing new stuff, tearing tearing stuff apart. And yeah. in the uh, in the words of Seth Godin, at some point you just got to ship. Yes, I was just going to say that. That is that's exactly right. So, I you, you know, again, I've I've I bought my book. You know that. Um, right. And so I, I've read through chunks of it. I haven't got through the whole thing yet, but I lots of stories, which I love. Right. And so, um, there's a lot of lessons and stories. So what is one story that really seems to resonate with people just based on the feedback you've gotten so far? Actually the Mount error, you know, it's not the success on Kilimanjaro. It's the failure on, on error app yeah. that resonates. And, but it's also, people have heard me use the term defining moments and, and there's, there's several in our lives, mm -hmm. but, I, I failed because I didn't know how to use my equipment right. was the main thing. Put your spikes I, on for the first time at that moment. Yes. Yeah, see, I read it. <laughs> I underestimated how difficult it was going to be. Yeah. Um, I was a marathon runner. I've run 20 marathons and, you know, it's like, I'm going to walk up a 16,000 foot mountain. What's yeah, <laughs> no big deal. What's the big deal? Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, I've never been, was a fast marathoner. So it's like, yeah, I've been out there on the road for six hours, one foot in front of the other. I can do this. And no, it was a different challenge. Um, but 
the morning of the summit, you, you get up extreme uh, at a crazy hour, like midnight, because you've got a six hour climb to get to the, the summit. And what the guides are trying to do is to get you on the summit as the sun is rising. Um, you know, so mm -hmm. you're seeing the sunrise from the mountain. It's also the safest time from a weather standpoint because mm -hmm. the winds don't pick up until later in the day. It's the calmest and you know, there's a lot of good safety reasons for that as well. But when you start out, you, you know, you're, you're woken at midnight, um, grab a quick breakfast. Uh, you've got the headlamp on and there's probably 15 people um, in our expedition. And so you're, you're part of the snake of, of lights. And that's really all you're seeing is, is that and the most amazing skies you can ever believe because you're out in the, where there's no light pollution at all. Right. Um, and I started walking and doubting, walking and doubting. My crampon had broken um, the day before, which was when we had first got to the glacier portion of the, the mountain. And um, as I point out in the book, I'd never put the crampon mm -hmm. on before. Yeah. And my wife during the winter here in Michigan was like, you might want to put those crampons on and walk around in them a little bit and get used to them. Nah. You're putting a bunch of spikes in your shoes and you're walking. <laughs> and um, so I didn't, I didn't trust my crampons. I'm carrying this brand new, beautiful ice axe, which I might as well have been car carrying a tire iron or <laughs> baseball bat for that matter, for all I knew about using an ice axe. Right. And realized that I was in the danger zone now. You know, it was like, I'm now on a glacier and at a place where not only if I fall, I can put everybody else at risk as well. Yeah. You know, if they have to wait for me, if they have to rescue me, <laughs> um, but all of those doubts. And so I was at the back of the line and I just kind of stopped, continued to watch them walk and then turn around and walk back to camp. And by the time I got back to the tent, I was just beating myself up. I mean, my, my self-talk was horrible. I mean, if somebody else had called me those words, I would have, there would have been a fight. You, right. know? <laughs> you know, you loser, you chicken, you, a DNF, a do not finish. And, yeah. you know, I was really just struggling with it. I tried to go back to sleep and, and couldn't. I was pissed at myself. And then I started thinking about the coaching that I do. And, and the advice I give other people. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you can't talk to yourself that way. And what have you got to be thankful for? Mm -hmm. And I look out the tent and the sun is rising over Mount Ararat and it's, it's casting a shadow. I mean, I can actually see the mountain peak. And instead of thinking, well, everybody else is up there and I'm down here, it was like, wow, you're 60 years old. You're 15,000 feet up a mountain, you're in good enough health to have accomplished that. Who else is looking out over Armenia and Iran and, and Kurdish Turkey and, you know, experiencing what you're experiencing right now? And I, I turned all of that negativity into all of the positives. And of course, while waiting for my wife and the others to return, I had time to be thinking, why did I fail? Right. Well, <laughs> As I said, I had equipment that I didn't know how to use. I had not prepared properly. And I was 265 pounds at the time carrying a pack on my back up a mountain. Yeah. Um, it became real clear that I, I hadn't prepared myself. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the story that most people <laughs> go, yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, but I think I, I think that, you know, uh, stories, stories of failure resonate with people because we've all had them, maybe not on, on the mountain, like for real, but on our own mountain. And so I, I think most people appreciate, you know, sort of your transparency in that moment um, and uh, sharing the story of what's going through your mind and and all that sort of thing. So I know I, I, I always appreciate that story as well. So thank you for sharing it here. So uh, just real one final question for you. Um, th there are so many people, you know, you'd said, look, it took you however many years, right, to write this book. 
there's so many people who want to write a book. I hear people all the time, you know, and so what advice either would you give them or do you give them if people come to you, what advice do you give them about climbing that mountain? Resolve to do it. Mm. Um, it is a matter of making that decision to do it and understand it's not going to be easy. Right. Um, you need to push yourself. And you, I'm talking to a guy who creates a ton of content, <laughs> but I don't think people realize how hard you must have to push yourself mm. every day. I mean, right. when I say I, I've got a file on my computer going back to 2010 of literally hundreds and hundreds of articles, they're only there because I agreed to write for an organization. Right. Or, you know, I'm currently writing for Promo Journal, you know, part of Promo Corner. If I didn't agree to do it, there'd be months where I'd let it pass and then right. another month. And at one point I, I had created a website, create to be great.com, and that was going to be my blog. And if you know, I shouldn't even have put it out there because people will now look it up. <laughs> 2015 is probably the last blog on there. Right, right, right. And uh, you may find that blog in my book. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, you know, I think you're right. I think building whatever that looks like for you, I, I, you know, I talk about that, you know, I create a schedule and you know that you and I've talked about it. One of the reasons is I believe it builds up integrity with the audience, but honestly, the bigger reason is that I think it keeps me accountable. Like, and that sounds like that's what you've created places where you have accountability partners to keep you going. And right. I, it, that's why the, the Stan Phelps, when, when you said, I mean, that immediately I was just like, oh yeah, that's a great, when is it going to be done? Because yeah. that's how we do most projects, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. And so I, that, that was, that resonated with me because it was, and that's for me, I'm, I, I my attention is all over the place. Right. Mm -hmm. And so having those short windows of, of focus is super important for me. Right. And, and a, creating a date does that, right? Yeah. Yeah. In 2019, uh, my wife and I walked from Indiana to Canada, um, up Michigan. That's awesome. And again, that's one of those, oh, I should write a book. <laughs> um, no, I haven't started. <laughs> but now after, after um, publishing Summit, now it's like, maybe I ought to go back. And it's like, well, it was two years ago when you did that. Yeah. But the book wouldn't be about taking it each step, you know, it was like walking, you know, why did the Amish uh, settle in Northern Indiana and, and Southern Michigan? And why is there such a big Amish community there? And, and mm -hmm. as we walked up Michigan, you know, through Grand Rapids where I now live, but you know, that was furniture city. I mean, there were stories every, yeah. every step of the way. And, you know, it could make a good book. Now, I'm not gonna put it out there that I'm writing it yet. Not yet. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's get this one if out I were there. to say it, it would happen. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, and by the way, as a side note, I always say that whenever, like, even if I'm not in a running space, I like to run and walk or whatever. Um, but whenever I go to a new community, the best way to, to really see a new community is to put your feet on the ground and go for a walk or go for a run in those areas. It's like you see stuff you just don't see unless you're exactly. really in it like that. Yeah. You know, I mentioned the, uh, the marathons, um, that I've, I've run, you know, and if I go to Austin, Texas, it's like, oh yeah, I remember running by that. Yeah. Oh, I remember yeah. when I see state capitals, cause I've, I've run a lot of the state capital um, yeah. marathons, uh, you know, and I see, you know, it immediately brings back the memories as well as, yeah, there's something about having the feet on the ground. And we, we ski in Northern Michigan a lot and we, we have to drive by the areas that we walked and, yeah. <laughs> We get tired of telling each other, oh, remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I assume uh, folks can get the book, Summit, at uh, on Amazon. It's on like Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com and awesome. available both uh, in ebook and, and uh, paperback. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Paul. I appreciate you taking the time and uh, we'll have to do it again sometime, okay? All right. Thanks a lot, Kirby. All right, buddy. That's going to wrap up this edition of Delivering Marketing Joy. We'll see you next time.